Over the past week, my good friend Ben and I have been traveling over 1400 miles down to Bordeaux and back through the Champagne region back to the UK. Despite some issues with the language barrier in Northern France. Uh, good. Uh, good. Pizza. Can I? Okay, um, bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> We'd got down to Bordeaux and we enjoyed plenty of chateau tours in both the Medoc and Saint Emilion regions, learning masses about wine production in the region. We thought Saint Emilion was particularly picturesque and the scenery in Champagne region was also stunning. Seems everywhere we went was just endless vineyards. We even got to see some old school equipment on how they used to produce wine and also how they store the champagne. We shared many a laugh. So on our last night in Bordeaux, we uh, found there's a Pornhub documentary. So, so we don't get, we get one of the uh, hosts in trouble. We <laughs> set a reminder when it comes out. <laughs> Hopefully his boyfriend turns him off. <laughs> Uh, coming soon. <laughs> and a fair few hangovers in Bordeaux before stopping off for a night in Champagne. We enjoyed a tour up there before drowning our sorrows, having watched England rugby defeat in a French pub. We met some great people along the way, including Mark, Hannah, Tim and Val, as well as a great group of guys. And we left France with a car full of wine. A great success in my eyes. However, I would be lying if I said this trip was issue free. But to explain it properly, we've got to take it back to Tuesday, the day we set off for France. On Tuesday morning, I booked in for the tracking to be done on the car. And once that was done, it was almost time to set off for the Eurotunnel when I noticed a sudden clunking noise had developed on the right hand side. Immediately, it felt like suspension. I, I figured I had half an hour to quickly rush back to my warehouse and get the car on the ramp. I noticed eventually the large washers for the back of the lower control arm had somehow come loose. This seemed really strange as I hadn't even touched the suspension on that side. I did my best to tighten the bolt whilst against the clock, but the bolt just seemed to spin with the screw. When I tightened the bottom, the washer on the top would then come out of screw. Out of time and already running late for the train, I decided to pack some tools with a view to taking a look at it over in France. We managed to take it easy and get it all the way to Bordeaux in fact, where we pick up the action. What's the, uh, what's the plan then? So we're going to get it back in the middle, the driveway, and annoyingly, we tried to get it up at the curb over there. Uh, we tried to get it up on the curb over there, and it just wasn't enough height. I was hoping to be able to get under it, but we can't, and it's also pissing it down out there. So we're going to get it back here. I'm just going to reach under each side as best I can. We're going to try and angle this wheel so I can get in at the top bolt as well. And yeah, hopefully we'll be able to tighten this up. Spent a bit of time trying to see if I could get the spanner onto the top bolt by going through the wheel arch. As you can see here, it seemed to just about be possible. I'm trying to get under it, I can only reach with my arms, so we're not getting underneath the car, which is not good. Obviously, if we had the ramps back at the warehouse, this would be a 10 minute job. Um, so, what I've done is I've loosened off the under tray, I've located the screw, so I'm going to get, I'm going to screw from this end underneath here. Bed's gonna hold the spanner in place from that end, and hopefully it's gonna stay there whilst the screw tightens up and locks both ends into the groove, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, this is what I'm working with. <laughs> Ben's holding here the spanner at the other end, and I'm just doing little turns at a time. Hopefully it'll start getting some resistance here. Should be a good sign. For now, just wants to keep spinning. <laughs> Eventually the nut wouldn't tighten anymore and this seemed to be the best we could do with the setup we had. I know it's not flush here but at least it was sitting a bit better than before so just time to test it. Whilst the suspension was out the steering seemed to be off so I started by testing this and it felt a lot better. perfect but it's better isn't it yeah yeah you can't hear it you can't hear it close it's like a very small one but i think that's because i haven't been able to get it completely close let's see if we can pick it up on the mic
Satisfied, this was as good as we were going to get. We parked up, ready to travel to Champagne in the morning. Alrighty, well, a little update. Um, since you saw us preparing the suspension, it seemed to last all of about 200 kilometers, and we're back to where we were. It's uh, vibrating, it's uncomfortable, <laughs> it's making horrible noises, but we are making really good progress. There was a lot of act complaining at the beginning uh, with some horrendously wet weather, probably even worse than the way down. But it's, yeah, it's certainly been bumpy, uh, but we've got a good driver. We seem to be, uh, <laughs> seem to be surviving. Quite, quite dry now, a bit of sunshine, so we're uh, we're doing the speed limit. Let's say that. <laughs> Running late for our tour, we did have to put the foot down quite a bit and suspension issues aside, I really felt like this was the perfect car for Grand Touring. How easily this car does the speed of um, the speed limit. Very impressive. <laughs> vibration in the steering. The steering's playing up, the suspension feels awful, it feels like it's gotten completely loose again. Um, I feel hungover as well. Here's some footage from that, and some photos. <laughs> um, yeah, this, this feels like a real chore trying to get us back to Cali. Um, we're just gonna get it onto the train and then we're gonna try and have another look, but until then... <laughs> It's really playing up, isn't it? More of bar. <laughs> Alrighty, well, we've managed to get here. We've managed to limp it home onto the Euro Tunnel. Thank goodness. It sounded awful at the end there, didn't it? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a bumpy ride. <laughs> <laughs> Driving up and down the train. You can just hear it rattling away. So, yeah, we're going to take a look at it soon. Ooh. It's uh, ra rattled heads and rattled suspension. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but absolutely dying with this hangover at the minute. Really, last thing I want to do is get under this car, but... I don't want to drive any more with a suspension like this. Do you want to get any fucking close? Uh, we'll change the plan. Uh, <laughs> because there's a car parked right behind us, literally inches and inches forward. This car on its parking brake does slight, move forward slightly, um, backwards and forwards. <laughs> I don't want to risk it. I don't want to be under the car when it moves. And uh, I don't want to roll into another vehicle. So I'm actually just going to, we're just going to suffer the suspension. Um, yeah, not fun. But <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to have to hold the car. This is, uh, yeah. this has turned into a strongman event. <laughs> <laughs> Brake pedal is going to be firmly pressed for out. <laughs> anyway, let's get it back to the UK. And well, anyway, as you can see, we did manage to get it back. That was in fact on Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon. It is now Tuesday morning and I felt, <laughs> I felt like it was so frustrating because other than the suspension on the side I haven't touched, so it was on this side here. That's the suspension I did, which was perfect. It was just this one that let us down and Sod's law, it happened just as we were about to set off for France, so didn't really have the time to repair it. Tried out there, but again, there was only so much I could do reaching under it, so I felt like it might as well just show you just how simple a job this is to do with a ramp. Of course, to get access to the back of the lower control arm, I needed to remove the under tray again, which then exposed the nut and bolt in question. All right, well, as you can see on the top, we're sitting nice and flush, so that's perfect, but on the bottom, it's just loose, which is just causing it to chunk sort of up and down, making a horrible noise. So I've got to hold the screw up the top there. I've just got to hold a spanner in place just to hold that still, whilst then I drill up from here, and that should just tighten it perfectly into place. I think we found the culprit, and that is this part here. And it looks different for a start. This is what I was given by Aston Martin. And as you can see, it's the same collar there, and then plenty of screw after. That's how it should be. And then you come over here. Firstly, there seems like there's some kind of blue in there, but then this bit and the, the sort of little washer it has are actually separate. See, I can spin that separately. I don't know how, but I feel like we've got the wrong bolt on here. Very strange. Well, thankfully we have had a stroke of luck with this. Obviously with it being the wrong screw is that uh, when I ordered the new suspension over there, if you remember, I made an issue with a knuckle. So I needed some new screws and bolts, uh, sorry, nuts and bolts. And uh, Chris from Aston Martin Bits actually just sent quite a few. And thankfully one of those nuts is exactly for the one we need. So I've just fit that, I'm gonna show you now. And look at that, 
fits a treat. So as you can see, we've got a bit of the runoff down here now, which is great. And then at this end, it's flush as well. And it's all talked off. I need to get that out. It seems a bit seized on at the minute, but I'll get that out with a, with a hammer in a second. But I'm gonna get that spanner out now. We're gonna get the car back down. I'm gonna well, tighten up the under tray first, get the car back down and we'll give it a little test, but I'm pretty confident we've solved the issue now because yeah, we got the right nut on. <laughs> I'm opting to try and see this as a lesson rather than point fingers as to how the wrong nut was on the car in the first place It's taught me that even where I don't expect there to be damage and work required I should still check all parts of the car over And well, I've just come back from taking it around the block and sure enough, yeah, it's fixed. So we found out what the issue was. It was someone had put the wrong nut on. I'm trying to think how that could have happened just when I was driving around the block then. I imagine maybe an insurance company could have done it, but they have stripped parts off to inspect it to see if they wanted to write the car off and they maybe put the wrong bolt on. I'm not too sure. Um, it seems like something to do is not put it together properly if they're gonna write it off anyway. Um, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. I swear on my life, I have not touched that side. I'm definitely not confident enough to touch anything that I think isn't broken. So yeah, it's not on me, this one. Um, the suspension I did, which is this side, absolutely fine, um, working a dream. So obviously slight downer on the trip to have a suspension issue, but I wanted to be honest and obviously give you guys a fair reflection of our trip. It was otherwise a brilliant trip and I really enjoyed it. But anyway, that's it on this episode for the Aston. Do stay tuned because later on this week, I'm gonna be working on the Cosworth. I know a lot of you are keen to watch me, well, watch me sort of continue work on that. I know there's a big following for the Cosi, um, but we've got a new fuel pressure regulator coming. Uh, I've ordered some high quality lacquer, 2K lacquer. We're gonna work, um, gonna try and get out all that sort of lacquer peel with some wet sand and then fresh lacquer, polish. And then we are gonna be working on the underside of the car as well. We've got some lano guard coming and we're gonna try and sort out that sort of surface rust and get this car ready to be sold. But for now, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Do be sure to hit that like button, hit that red button as well if you wanna see more content if you're new. Um, but for now, anyway, I'm Alex, check it out, bye-bye.